let's look at simple tapestry warping. I'm going to put on here four inches of warp and warp it the simplest way that I know and the most common way that, that we work, Susan and I. Warp. We do this whether the, the warp is four inches wide, which is what I'm going to do here, or four meters wide, you know, 15, 16, 17 feet. We try and make it with a continuous warp. And I'll show details of that happening later, but let's get this going. Four inches, I've marked it off in the centre, so I'm going two inches to the left of the centre here and two to the right. And all that happens is a continuing, continuous winding around and round, putting three loops between each inch mark. These are marked in half inches, but in this case it's six to the inch is what we've got here. It's three loops between each inch mark. The key is here to make sure, or try and arrange, no matter how wide the warp is, that you do it in one run. Switch off your telephone, delay your lunch or whatever. Because that gives you an even warp tension, more chance of it anyway. The warp tension itself has a, an average sort of tension, somewhere around three and a quarter, three and a half pounds on each warp. But it's fairly meaningless uh, to say that. The best explanation of how to warp, what tension to use, is to warp it up quite tight, or quite tight, maybe it's better. Um, the main thing is to make it even, because in the tension, uh, ultimately, I can adjust it here, loosen it or slacken it on a loom like this, on almost any loom. By, by turning these nuts. There's a long threaded rod in there, it's about 12 inches. So I can extend this loom or adjust it according to the size of warp that I want. But this will tighten the warp or loosen it. So when we do start off, we always leave these two nuts all oh, about a centimeter, half an inch apart. So we could loosen the tension or tighten it. And you will find with, with warp that it does vary according to the humidity in the air. It takes really no time to put on four inches of warp. I'm not being accurate with the spacing at the moment. I'm putting just the three loops between the inch marks. I'll readjust them later when I've finished. So I've started at the bottom, on and on, three loops to the inch, even tension. And almost always when we're warping, not almost always, always, we put on an extra warp at each end. The reason for that is one of the problems in weaving is to retain the, air, air, the tension, weft tension, and keep the edges straight. And we use the spare warp as a guide, so it's easy to eyeball that you're pulling or pushing by using the, the extra warp to do, to do with that. So that's the four inches on. finish down here and I'll put on the extra one here. And I can simply cut it now and tie it off again. I have this theory that there is only one, warp, one knot in the world and that's the half hitch with a number of variations but I tend to prefer to think of it that way. And 
it makes it simple. So that's all that it is. We, we use it in weaving many, many times. The next half inch I won't pull right through so that I can easily take that knot out. I've evened out the spacing on the bottom pretty accurately and the same up here. That's one on the inch mark, two in between, one on the inch mark, two in between, right across. It's a long time since I've used a reed. Uh, well, 1950, 52, 54 maybe. Uh, I've always worked without a reed. I've not ever found it a problem. I don't even like notching wood. I would prefer the warps are movable to do that. Um, it works fine this way, it's simpler, and that's a key in everything I think. I try to think of the simplest way to do it. Uh, and it's still adjustable, you know, I can move these around during the weaving, after the weaving. If I pull it in, I can encourage it to, to spread out like that. 